Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. I uh, first have to start off with this video and my disappointment. I had planned to do a build video on this, um, but unfortunately when I went back to review my footage, the first uh, two sections were missing. So pretty much everything was built up, I just had to finalize assembly. So instead of that, um, we have kind of just an overview. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do a build, uh, a build log was to show that even though these parts are tiny, you don't need highly specialized expensive equipment. I'll show you what I used here. You know, this I used for hot glue. Um, maybe five, six bucks in hot glue sticks. Um, my soldering iron, I believe I got that off of Banggood. And that was probably, it's got a little, that's the fanciest part about this, is you can actually change the temperature on it. Uh, it's a 60 watt. Um, it has a fine tip on it so you can change out the tips and if I remember correctly you just unscrew here and then you can change out the tips it loosens up um, probably again 10 11 bucks um, my helping hands or my needle nose probably came from Harbor Freight for two or three dollars which still has some hot glue in the end and my wire snips which I use for just about all purposes of cutting again probably a dollar or two from Harbor Freight and my exacto or scalpel whatever you want to call it utility knife i think this was a dollar at the counter at the checkout pickup so you don't need a soldering station and a heat gun and you don't need three four hundred dollars worth of equipment in order to build these things you just need to go slow and be patient um i have some flight footage i'll show you at the end of this um i had originally intended to have this plate lower and be able to put my battery in here as well. Um, what I found though is that with everything hanging so low that it really flew and I expected it to fly different than say this but it flew really weird <laughs> and then uh, it was just like everything was sloppy and I thought well we'll just tune that out that was the the beauty of having clean flight on our our sea sky board or Sky. sky I think it's Sky. sky not C Sky, because if it was C, it would be S E E, wouldn't it? Anyways, you know, we could tune that out. So I had this plate and it would just wobble all over the place. It was soft and sloppy. It felt like you were surfing, not flying. Um, and no matter what I did with the PIDs, I, I, I just couldn't make it react any better. So I gave up the ghost. I moved my motors way down and I moved my bottom plate way up and kind of bring everything into profile. And even then, it was still a little wobbly, and I wasn't sure why that was. It might have been my center of gravity was a little bit off, but I would hang the battery a little bit back towards the back here, have more weight back here because that, that VTX that's in there is so uh, heavy compared to the camera. Um, but anyways, I got it tuned pretty good, and you'll see that in the flight footage, that when I do some hard 180s, I still have a bit of wobble that I can tune out, maybe increase the D a little bit, because um, when I do 180s, It'll, you know, kind of wobble and shake a little bit. It's actually kind of dramatic, so it might have to go up quite a bit. Um, so we're kind of reviewing a few things. This is, well, let's go over the frame. This is the Picnic Quads efficiency frame. It's a 120. Uh, it's this clear plastic, which is called polycarbonate. The X that you see itself is 1175. This is a uh, cover plate or a bottom plate. Let's see what that's called. I have to scroll over here to remember. Um, bottom plate. This is called the double tab plate. Again, polycarbonate, and it is 575. So you're looking at uh, almost $18 in frame. Um, so that's. But you're buying U.S. Um, Woods Turning runs Picnic Quads. He's pretty active over at Micro uh, Motor Warehouses Community. And also in the uh, RC groups. I think it's wood's turning, yeah. Um, so you're paying a little bit more because you have an individual who's got a small business that that makes these. Um, motors are from the Multirotor Superstore. These are the CL820 17s. They are $14.99 each. They're not each for a set of four. Um, they come just like the Micro Motor Warehouse motors. They have leads already on them so they plug right into these micro JSTs. Uh, the uh, 
Sky Skyboard you are familiar with here, 32 bucks or 32.99. This is the uh, 600 TV line um, CMOS camera that's supposed to be 170 degrees and is currently priced at 813 if you buy it um, from the China warehouse. I think it goes up to about $10 if you buy it US Direct. Um, yeah, 1089 if you go US Direct. I was pretty disappointed in this camera. Um, outside it does fine. Um, and it, it could be because if you look closely, I've got a mass of wires in here. And what I did was instead of soldering any line from the camera directly to the VTX, I used connectors everywhere. And I also wanted to leave the, the wires a little bit longer in case I wanted to uh, use it on something else. Say this frame breaks and I have something else. I wanted to have some portability there. Um, so, therefore, I have this mass of wires here, which, there, in theory, there could be some electrical interference that, I guess, could be messing with the image quality. But I wouldn't say it was so much the image quality that I was disappointed as it was the color clarity. Um, it doesn't handle light all that great. Um, it doesn't handle it terrible, but I just, when comparing it to the, the gnarly FPV backpack, and I know I, I paid substantially more for this, but I'm just talking about the camera, the lens and, and the, um, uh, color correction inside of it. Um, uh, inside, because our house has a lot of natural wood tones in it, it kind of reminds me of a cell phone from three, four years ago, where every picture you take would kind of have a red hue to it, um, the color inside is like that. Outside, things are just a little bit flat. Um, you do get, it does uh, have some flare from the sun if you if you are flying towards the sun or you get your camera directly in the sunlight. Um, back to inside, um, I noticed with LED lights in our kitchen, when those were on, you would have these little like conical light looking structures coming from it. I don't know what you would actually call that, but um, I don't, again, I didn't see it on the other camera. So it was something I noticed. Um, this antenna is $4.29 when you get it direct from the U.S. And I think it's funny because they say it's lightweight. This is not a lightweight antenna. If you're really looking for a lightweight antenna, you should go to fpvhobby.com and get their lightweight circular polarized antenna. You'll have to pay more, but it's actually lightweight. To me, this looks almost identical. Oh, bumped the camera really bad there. Let me see if I can get these both in frame. What's different between these? One's marketed as lightweight, the other one not. Well, the difference is this one has copper on the end of it, and this one did not. So I guess if you take the nut and the washer stuff off of a traditional, you can market it as lightweight. This is this is anything but not lightweight. It works. It seems to work fine. I noticed that I have more noise with this setup than I expected. It's still very flyable. The noise inside is very thin. It's the, the wavy lines across. It's very thin. But oddly enough, when you go outside, those lines get bigger. So I don't think the range is going to be that great with this setup. Um, and and the, the uh, VTX in here is the FX758-2. Uh, so it's the one with the blue bottom. Um, and it's fairly lightweight, and soldering it was uh, fairly straightforward. You can find a schematic for it online. Um, there's something up with my dip switches, though, because I don't seem to be able to change channels, or at least not what I expect to. Um, but it does work, and that's the main thing. And that's why I wanted to do the build video, was to show you that if you're wondering, you know, I don't have a lot of equipment or a lot of experience or something like that, can I do this? Yeah, you can do it. Just go slow. Take it step by step and just build it out. Start by building your mainframe. Make sure that your boards and your motors and everything flies. And then worry about the FPV part because they're really separate. And you'll notice I have two power leads coming off. And one goes to the bottom and connects to the oops, the Pololu that's sitting right here on the side. That's tuned to 4 volts. From the Pololu it goes into the front of the VTX from the VTX it goes to the camera and that's how everything gets power um, now only the black and the red wire from the camera go back to the VT or uh, yes they go back to the uh, Pololu actually to get power 
the cameras white which is audio and yellow which is video go back to the VTX to transmit. Uh, this one does still have a microphone. You can see it down here, which is kind of cool. Having the microphone is kind of interesting because you get a little bit more of that flight feel when you watch the footage. Now, it's obnoxiously loud, so turn your volume down. I'll probably silence that when I put it in uh, or turn it way down. But you can hear yourself when you when you get into a tight corner where you're wanting to whip it around and you've got to bank it up to keep from drifting into a tree or something like I was. You can really hear the motor spinning up and really howling. It's kind of fun. Um... This one is uh, a lot of fun to fly. I, you know, I spent a lot of time tuning it. Unfortunately, I failed when I had the motors up real high, and then I had this tray down low. So it just made it really bottom heavy, and it made it just kind of swing in every direction. It was so soft. You, you just, it was just unflyable. Um, I'm still using primarily the Venom Fly 500s. I do find that I will fly the Nanotech 260s every once in a while. Although on this frame, the lead's almost too short to plug in. Um, but I, I get about um, a little over three minutes sometimes if I fly inside with these. And I get almost six minutes. Now, I presume that what uh, well, I'm seeing the added uh, flight times is, one, either I'm more efficient in my maneuvers or it's because I have new motors new brushed motors are going to be much more efficient than old brushed motors. I'm seeing flight times with this little guy going down now. Where I used to get five minutes, I'm now getting about 440. And this motor right here doesn't like to spin up. You have to you have to kick it before it'll go on its own. So these are about on the last legs. Um, let's compare those motors for a minute too. Not necessarily side by side or anything, but these are the Micromotor Warehouse 802015s. And these are the Multirotor Superstore 802017s. And I think that these are worth every penny. They come in at uh, $14.99 right now. Um, they're sold as a set. You get all four for $14.99. Um, shipping comes from uh, California, so you get them quick. Um, and they are punchy. As a matter of fact, you'll probably see in the flight video, I'm so used to flying this around and having to give it like 60% to get it up that I really hammer the throttle and start going when I normally fly this. But when I fly this one, I have a hard time. I end up going, whoa, 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 and i got to get the throttle calmed down, and then I go. Um, but it's a lot of fun flying it. I've had a few crashes. You can see the little nicks here. Let's weigh them up. Weight's always something we want to know about these things. Okay, so we'll go with this new guy first. 45.4 without a battery. This one's a little trickier. It likes to... And this is 45.6767. So they're almost identical. Now I could save some weight on this one by getting a true lightweight antenna and probably finding a more um, lightweight uh, VTX as well. I didn't think that was necessarily small or light. Um, I could also cut some weight by getting rid of this mass of wires that I've got so that I could use this FPV setup on something different to where the pieces would be stretched out. Uh, or possibly even mounted on different levels. Um, the noise that you see in the video may actually be becoming because the VTX is so close. Let me turn it this way so you can see that. The VTX is so close to the speed controller, and that's another source of possible noise. Um, there probably would be less noise if that's the cause, if I just move this back to this back end tab, but then my weight starts to get here, and then I've got to mount the battery clear up front. And then stretch the lead weight in the back. So uh, that's a possibility, but I probably won't do that right away. It's it's flyable, um, and it's still a lot of fun. You know, after the first five or ten seconds in the air, you don't even hardly notice the noise unless it gets really bad to where you can't really see. Um, so I'm going to leave you with the flight footage. I'm only going to include probably you know 30 or 40 seconds of it. Um, I'm going to show you both the indoor and the outdoor so you get an idea what the camera looks like. But if you're looking to build a quad uh, for indoor flight, 
I can definitely tell you, you can do it if you've got any experience at all. If you've already got a soldering iron laying around, then you've probably got what it need, what you need in order to be able to solder these tiny little pieces. Just go slow, and um, be sure you're doing what you're. Be sure of what you're doing. You know the whole measure twice, cut once. That's kind of the same sort of theory you want to apply when doing these. Um, really, all quads, but it gets really hard when you. It gets harder when you're doing it on such small equipment. So uh, let's get to the flight footage and um, if you have any questions about anything, uh, please let me know. I'll link the, uh, pi the parts that I use down in the description. Um, I'm getting quite a few questions in, uh, on other topics, so I may start a, a different series, kind of a getting started uh, or my path on quads uh, so that people uh, might get some of their questions that I'm getting answered that way. Um, rather than having to wait on me to respond to certain things. Um, so next up, we'll go to the flight footage, and I appreciate you guys all subscribing, and we'll watch for more videos coming soon.